people what's going on now. Everyone is facing their own challenges, their own personal battles. And I think the power of kind of, you know, appreciating people and just coaching them and helping them, I think it's, 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 it's really important. And, and you did that for me. So, and you still do that for me, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny when we take pictures together, you are six foot seven. Yeah, I was six six. Yeah, yeah. Six six, yeah. and I am five foot three. Yeah. Uh, and so even it, you know, in tennis co tennis clothing, I'm maybe five foot two <laughs> and a half in that yeah, half yeah. pounds. But but it's it's just amazing. Uh, and and you have you have come to Los Angeles, and you have. Uh, we've done executive thought leaders forums for mm. executive for high level VIP clients and mm. for EO um, um, EO entrepreneurs from EO Los Angeles. Mm. And, um, and we've got to get you back to talk to EO. Now I'm an EO member. Oh, congratulations! So, so you know how wonderful that is. But yeah. but I want to I want to talk um, about a, a couple of things uh, because this is more for everybody who's watching. I just want to give you a teaser of what's to come. So I'm going to give you a very high level overview of mm. James Plusky in all that you are and in, in some of the things. So we're just going to go in and out of different areas, and then we're going to have. A, a more in-depth conversation um, around what you've done in your life. Um, I want to talk about your relationship with Sir Richard Branson because that, that all comes up. Look, so let's talk about Richard. I, I got to meet Richard because of you and, and had dinner with him and all of this. Mm -hmm. but, but you've had a very special relationship with Richard. Yeah, I've been, I've been very lucky. Um, you know, I've been very lucky to spend a significant amount of time with him uh, in in Ireland, in the UK, and in, uh, on Necker, obviously, and then in the Bahamas once as well. So, uh, look, it's it's for me spending time with someone like him. He's a, he's an icon of entrepreneurship and of business, but also in terms of values, in terms of um, his personality uh, as a leader and as a person to learn from. He's second to none. Um, I I he's been very kind to me in terms of my career, in terms of helping me. Um, and look, every time I spend time with him, I've done a month with him several times, kind of coaching him, uh, and it's one to one, and it's you know I'd have a cup of tea with him in the morning, all that sort of stuff. I've been, I've always kept a journal. I always keep those little lessons that I would have learned from him. Um, you know, little things like he's never late, so that's one thing oh, that no. I've always <laughs> never never late. Um, he's obsessed with his physical fitness, so. He feels like he's much more productive work-wise if he's physically active. Um, and I found that quite interesting, actually, in that I, you know, since coming back to Ireland, meaning, you know, what tends to happen uh, or us mere mortals sometimes is in corporate life is we, you know, we neglect our, our, our looking after ourselves because we're so busy, right? Um, but I looked at him and said, this guy is one of the busiest people in the world you know but yet he's it's non-negotiable that he plays tennis or he kite surfs or something like that in the morning and he does something in the evening as well um so he's he's a he's a really really humble i mean as i think you would allude to a really humble person um, he is very much so and for me his biggest strength is his ability with people and i think his ability to get the best set of people um, and just one little story uh, I remember he asked me what type of uh, tennis racket he should be using. Um, and I suggested, I said, I'm, I'm not too sure on the racket you should use, but I have a friend that owns a tennis shop in Ireland. So my friend sent over a couple of tennis rackets for him. Um, and Richard used one of them and said, this is the one. And he said two things. One, make sure he sends me the bill. Don't want it for free. Everyone's trying to make a living. Second thing was, he said, email me his email. So I said, okay. And then when he was, when he, that evening, he said, yeah, would you make sure you send me that email with uh, Will's email? Um, and then about, I'd say about three or four days later, I get a message from Will and it's a picture and it's an email from Richard saying, dear Will, thank you very much for sending over the rackets. Going forward, you'll be my racket consultant. All the best, Richard. So for me, it's a very simple story, but he always thinks about people and he always, he has that ability for someone who's six foot six, he has the ability to make them feel ten foot six, you know. So, 
He uh, does, he does. And he did that when you introduced me to him. I remember you you took the time and you texted me, hey, Richard is getting ready to get on the on the court. Yeah, you got to have those little Come secrets, yeah. <laughs> and then I came down and it was just the three of us. I mean, it was you and Richard and then there I was and I had an opportunity to spend some quality time with him. And, and he mm. even asked me, I, I gave him my book. Uh, we were talking about my book and he says, do you have a copy? And I'm like, mm. I, 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 I would never yeah. think that somebody like Sir Richard Branson would want somebody like my book, right? Because you yeah. don't know it's so funny how we measure ourselves and we make that mistake all the time. We're all human beings. But at the moment, I just, I remember, and he, I gave him the book and he says, well, you got to sign it. And so yeah. on the spot, I had to write something to him and he says, just put it back in my bag. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going into his bag, into, yeah. his bag, into Richard Branson's private bag and, and how wonderful it was just to spend quality time with him several times, you know, dinner. Yeah. Lunch. Yeah. Like I, I, yeah, it, one of the most interesting questions I've gotten was when I did the when I did the uh, event in LA with you, and someone asked someone asked the question. It's one thing to get in the door, but how do you stay inside the door? Yes. Which I thought was which I thought was really fascinating, and it's something I've always it's something that no one had ever asked me, and I kind of think about it a lot. And for me, when I think about it, I think about authenticity, right? That like I think a lot of people. Um, they try and be someone they're not and they try and impress and they, they, they try and be yeah they try and impress too much or I, I don't know what the word I don't know if I'm articulating right but for me yeah. personally yeah and from spending time with you with him say for example it's like you know and with that just be yourself right I mean there's yeah. no point in trying to be someone you're not like be yourself no, no exactly and I think he, I, from spending time with that with him I think he appreciates that the most he does, and um, in this, and I got to observe you at Necker Island, and you know, most of the people there. When uh, the first time I went, I was I was actually pretty impressed. Mostly billionaires and millionaires. I mean, the poorest person was a millionaire, and you know, mm. just from there. And, and these are people from all over the world that get together, and it's just such a great thing that Trevor puts on, and and. Mm. Uh, uh, so if anybody wants to go, let us know, because it's definitely something amazing. So probably mm. next year, I would, I would imagine. But mm. uh, one of the things that I noticed about you at Necker Island with all of these people is your ability to connect. You just said, you know, getting in the door is one thing, but staying in the door is just really being yourself. So I'm just mm. going to make that comment. And then I want to move on to something else because I know people are going to want all kinds of different things. Nienke is watching us and she's saying, uh, Nienke, how are you? Both of us. Just so everybody knows, Nienke, and we've been talking to Nienke also, Nienke, James yeah. and I were at an event in Luxembourg together with Annika, yeah. um, uh, who put something together for the parliament on, uh, on the Women's uh, Day last year, and we were all yep. together. It's a great event. Yeah, so uh, she's saying, yep, authenticity is key. So there you go, Nienke. Um, she's she's yeah. going to tell me to put my shoulders back now. Oh, yeah, she's, she is. <laughs> she's saying, okay, you have to do this because Nienke is the speaker's coach. She yeah. will you on, on uh, what is it? Uh, Ted. Ted, Ted talks, yeah, Ted's yeah. speaker, and, and she's just amazing. So what I was going to say was your ability to connect with people, but not just connect with people. But I felt, James, in, in, you know, the connections I made at Necker were pivotal connections and pivotal friendships with real people, people that uh, normally, because of the amount of money they have in their bank, people mm. feel um, almost not good enough and they won't even approach them. Mm. And, um, and so what, you, what I felt with you was, Betty's here. I'm going to make the most out of her trip. I'm going to introduce her. You introduced me to Richard's PR person, to his personal secretary, to, mm. um, and then to our dear friends. Now, uh, I have dear friends in, mm. in Ireland and in, in people all over the world. And so the connections that I was able to make, but you do that with such purpose. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Add value with such purpose um and uh Nienke is saying uh you are fine 
James Klusky. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yeah, it's it's it, it's the ability to really add value. So now let me let me take you to a different place. Let's get out of mm. Necker because there's so okay. many facets to you, and let's get into uh, after Necker. And you and I have been talking about okay, so what do you do? How do you pivot? All of these things, and then all of a sudden I hear about you breaking the world, the Guinness record, mm. the number of hours uh, for a foursome to stay on the court, playing yeah. consecutively. Tell us yeah. about Yeah, so that was, um, yeah, it was, we, so we broke the, broke the record. We played for 60 hours continuous tennis uh, for charity, so um, for a great charity called Enjoy Tennis. Uh, yeah, it was an amazing experience. I mean, it's not something I would probably be racing to do again, to be honest. But again, I mean, back to, I don't want to go back to the neck thing, but like spending time with a lot of those people really inspired me, you know, and, and that's not just Richard, right? So I don't want to kind oh, yeah. of focus solely on him, but it's like just everyone who's thinks thinks big and kind of goes out and does stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I, when I was playing professional tennis, a couple of Irish guys had attempted uh, the world record to break it it was 57 hours and they did 33 hours um, and one of the guys got cramp and they had to stop so i saw this and i thought well this is really interesting i'd love to I, i'm the kind of person that i want to train for something i want to kind of be striving for a goal yeah. um so i recruited three players uh, and i said look are you interested in doing this they said yes and we went for it and and uh it was an amazing experience, like s surreal experience. I remember before we went, before we did the record attempt, um, we we had a, a guy came and spoke to us who was an ultra marathon runner, mm -hmm. and he said to us, "Look, the sun will come up on Sunday morning. It's just a question of whether you guys are still on the tennis court." Yes. And I remember thinking, and I suppose it's pretty apt now in that look. Everyone's going through their own struggles and battles and successes and failures and so on. So um, that ability, that resilience piece of just keep going. Uh, and I, I had a great experience. I, I absolutely loved it. I've never, I personally, I haven't ran a marathon, but I remember when we got to the last maybe 10 or 12 hours, I actually was, it was never in doubt, you know, but before that, then there was moments where it was obviously really difficult. So, um so you let's know, stop it, for a moment. Stop, stop, stop for a moment. Mm. That moment, that 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 little tiny moment, because you've talked about this so many times, and there's such a big lesson there. If I can kind of slow us down for a moment, so many times in life we get to we have a big goal, and mm. this goal is a huge goal, bigger than life. Nobody in the whole world has done this. Only you. In, mm. in and you are right there and you're thinking oh my gosh i don't think i can go anymore mm. was it that vision of sunday morning being on the court what was it that had you go there yeah i mean i think it, it, it's it's so two things one i think is it's like when you get to that wall if you just kind of can keep going, if you can get through that wall, then the, the sunlight is there to, to use that analogy. I mean, I think for me personally, um, the most important thing that I found in my career with everything in life is having good people around you. So people that build you up, people that support you, because in that world record, you know, there's four players on the court, there's people supporting us. Like not everyone is feeling great at, at one time. Uh, so like the importance of having a coach or a supporter or, you know, I think that that's a, that support system for me has always been the most important thing. You know, I think tennis can be a lonely sport. Business can be a lonely uh, existence, but I think you need people to, you need those positive people around you. Absolutely. And this is something that you're doing now. You're doing, you're coaching business leaders. Um, can mm -hmm. you tell us, I, I mean, I know this, but I just want everybody to know, because uh, I'm just so proud and, I, and I, I love the work you're doing and you're working with, tell us the brands and the people you're working with. Yeah. So like I, uh, I suppose after I came back from, from LA with you, uh, I started my company um, and yeah, it's gone from strength to strength. I'm doing a lot of one-to-one -one executive coaching with people. 
um, very much around performance and goal setting. A lot of tech companies in Dublin, so companies like Airbnb, uh, Workday, these kind of big techs that are in Ireland. Um, I do a lot of kind of offsites per company or team development programs, you know, usually in tech again, um, or financial services. I've done a couple of them. Companies trying to hit their target, working with the team around that. Um, and then a lot of keynote speaking as well uh, on the topic of high performance, goal setting. I'm also speaking on networking a little bit as well, which is something yeah, that's, natural. yeah, it's a, it's a passion of mine, but it's not, it's, uh, it's, um, yeah, it's definitely, I, 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 like, I love, like, kind of a previous question, like, I, when I meet someone, my first thought is, who can I introduce that person to, you know, yeah. that's the way my mind works, I know, for whatever too. reason, and I think you're, yeah, I think maybe that's why we get on so well, you're definitely the same, that when you come somewhere with me, and I know people, that I'll try and, and you know, make you feel comfortable and introduce you, and I think, uh, so I love, I love networking as well, so I'm speaking about that, so. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, mm. uh, so, so let's continue then. Um, this, uh, how um, in your toughest moment when you broke through, your thought was, and what you said was, having good people around me, the support mm. system, and all of that. Mm. But in that moment, you're by yourself, and you're thinking, I can't do this anymore. Mm. Are you thinking I can't let them down or are you thinking the sun's going to go up and I want to be there? Or are you thinking I'm going to break my, you know, the record in my own body, my belief system? Is it being positive? Me is saying positive. Um, yeah. So what was it? I think it's, I think it's that mindset. I think it's the, it's the positive, the growth mindset, that sort of stuff. I think it's, I think people have this incredible ability to adapt you know, and to survive almost. So, you know, I went to Louisiana to, to college um, on, a, on a sports scholarship playing tennis there. I was an 18 year old kid coming from Ireland to 40 degree heat, humidity. You know, I remember, I remember actually thinking about this during the world record, like our, we would have, you know, 5.30 a.m. weights and then running and all this. And like, it was, it was incredibly hard. And I remember thinking, like, when the coach kind of told us at the start what, what the session was, thinking, I, I mean, I can't do that. There's no way. But people just have this, I think people have an innate ability just to survive and get through things. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's that mindset, like, it's that real kind of strong, that argument with yourself. Um, but literally, I mean, putting the head down and just going through things. Um, and I, I actually... On the coronavirus stuff, I heard a really interesting interview where one, um, I can't remember what the guy did, but he was talking about kind of that in that he's like, look, people have this ability to adapt. You know, we need to, there's a new normal, all those types of things and you, you have to adapt. But we, as a, a, you know, as a species, we can do that. So I think with the world record, it's, it's, a, it's a hard one to articulate, but one was the team and then two is the mindset of, I will not be taken off this court. Like I, I, I won't be the one that's, that's kind of letting everyone down or I won't be the one that's failing on this. Like I'm, I'm here to stay, you know. I got it. Um, I, I want to, I want to read some of the comments before I ask you for the last question. Okay. Um, so um, let's see. Uh, Nienke started some of the comments with um, great to see you both again. Uh, question of taking the opportunity. Authenticity is key. Mm. Uh, Maria says, I love that you may get in the door. How do you get to stay? I feel it is being kind and of value. Mm. Uh, then um, uh, Sir Richard Branson seems warm and caring and kind. Yeah, he is. And yeah. he's also a shrewd businessman. So don't let that warmth and caring and all of that. Yeah. You. He's a shrewd businessman, a great negotiator. Um, mm. and people really love him. Audrey, um, it's great to connect the person you have shared with us on Zoom Live now. Oh, uh, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, and and, uh, go ahead. I was going to say one well, on these because someone mentioned the opportunity piece. Yes. I mean, just, just like in terms of the Necker Cup, the first time I went to the Necker Cup, you know, obviously some of the best tennis players in the world go to the event. Yes. I wasn't, you know, my ranking was, was 145 in the world, so I was a good tennis player, but I'm not, uh, you know, a Grand Slam champion. But I, you know, I picked up the phone. I knew that I could add value at that event. 
I picked up the phone. I called Trevor, who I'd never really spoken to before. And I said, look, I'll stand on the tennis court all day and I'll hit with the business people and you'll never be short to tennis player. And, and he said, yes. And that's when I think of in terms of my own career and the people I've met and so on, that where that one phone call has, has led for me, you know, I think it's, it's incredible. And uh, for anyone who's watching, who's, you know, thinks they should make a call to someone, but is not sure, you know, if they're, they're kind of on the fence, maybe this person doesn't want to speak to me. But you know deep down you should make that call or you should go for that meeting or whatever it is and just go and do it like um, and that was a lesson that i learned so take like opportunities are there but you need to actually make them and take them as well yes absolutely um um i want to one of those opportunities was getting uh sir richard branson to write a Instagram post about your new book this week. He just did an Instagram post. So go to yeah. Rich Branson um, Instagram and you'll see James and his book. Can you show us your book? I haven't, yeah. I, I ordered it. I haven't received it yet. And the next time we meet, we're going to talk deeper. There you go there. Videos, but there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Nick, check this out. <laughs> and actually, Nienke was the one. She, she uh, in Luxembourg. She was encouraged me around it. She, she introduced me to Mindy, and yeah, the rest is history on on, on that. So thanks to Nienke, I'm I'm very happy I did it. Yep, there you go. So, uh, did you hear that, Nienke? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's amazing. Um, we we could just put a bug in someone's ear, and that's all it takes. You know, uh, Richard yeah. and I were talking to. Um, who was it that was there? One of the champions, one of the tennis champions. And, and he was like, no, I'm too old. I'm too old. And Richard was like, no, you got to write a book. You got to write a book of Ovik. And um, you got to write a book. And so I stayed with him. And then I went out to, uh, up to him the next day. He says, okay, I'll write the book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, there you go. I know. It's it. of you. She says, that's brilliant. Um, Thank you. So, so tell us about your book. Just give us a very quick, high-level overview of the book and what people can expect for the next time. Yeah, so it's 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 very much around performance and goal setting. It's it's lessons really from my tennis career that I learned a lot, like my journey, um, but then also the people that I met along the way. So, like the best players in the world that I played with and against. So, lessons from them and myself. But then also, obviously, the business people that I that I met um, through tennis. So little snippets, little nuggets of information. Uh, so, yeah, it's available on Amazon. Connect with me on LinkedIn if you, if you like as well. Um, I'm looking forward to you reading it, Betty, because I, I mentioned you in it. So, uh, oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's, very, it's all very exciting. Um, I'm going to stop for a moment because I want, if, if anybody has a question for James and you want him to answer your question live, we're going to take about um, just another five minutes or so um, to answer any questions. If you have um, any questions that you'd like to ask James, and remember, he just said it, right? Um, if you are afraid to ask the question, then ask it anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully, it's a polite question. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, like I love um, when I spent time with you there in Los Angeles. I loved, uh, I loved LA. I thought it was an amazing place. I loved the like you were obviously speaking very positively at Ireland. Like I just love the American attitude. I love the entrepreneurial mindset. I love the can do, the get up and go. Um, I think it's, I think it's great. You know, so I'm looking forward to, to coming back at some stage. Uh, we're definitely going to be bringing you back, James. You know, I, I brought you to the United you might, States. You, you might not be able to get rid of me then. I, might say. I know, I know. We'll keep you. <laughs> uh, but I've, I brought you to the United States, I think, three years in a row. Is that correct? Two years in a row? Yeah, that, that's yeah. about right. Yeah, California and Bank. So yeah, had, yeah, that's about right. You know, had, had we not had COVID, you would be here just about now. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, Hope, yeah. so Hopefully things are things are slowly improving, slowly but surely. Yeah. So, so what people can expect um, when when James comes back is we're going to be doing some tennis tennis lessons um, with James. So you get to actually play with James, and and uh, he does this tennis clinic that is just amazing. And uh, and we'll do a, a fireside chat uh, with mm. James so that you can get to know him and you can get to 
um, to ask whatever you want um, from him. And uh, you're such a giving person and such an amazing leader. It's always just wonderful to, to uh, spend thank time you. with you. Well, the other thing that we're going to be doing is um, is some um, executive thought leaders forums where we bring top executives uh, and folks to to sit at a round table. Mm. And, um, and we discuss leadership issues and that's always so much fun. I love doing these with you, James. Oh, I thought it was amazing the, 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 uh, the last time we did it, it was brilliant, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and just uh, going back, just to, because uh, you touched on something there, I think that tennis as a sport, or you spoke about the, the, the people that you meet and the bank balances and all that stuff. I think sport, and tennis specifically because it's you know it's a gender neutral sport as well i think it's a great way to kind of break down the barriers with people and to have fun doing something and then you just get to know people better as mm -hmm. opposed to coming somewhere where you're you know suited and booted like i think um yeah i think sport is an amazing kind of leveler like that it is a leveler it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. Anything else matters except just being in the game and you don't even have to be really good. In fact, if you're not so good, you get people to help you. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a question here and talk about giving back. Nienke is asking a question. What is your target audience and how can we support you? Oh, very good. That's a very nice uh, question. Uh, my target audience really would be, would be corporates, would be companies um, that you know, a company might take several books off me for their employees to read. And I think given the current circumstance, I think it's a, it's a really good book to kind of refocus around goals, around yeah, learning from mentors, around taking that, those nuggets of information. Um, so yeah, that would, that would be my target really. If there's any companies out there that are interested in the book, please reach out. So. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so um, a lot of thank yous, a lot of awesome people are adding. Sophia, I just interviewed Sophia on authentic leadership and you're uh, reinforcing you. a lot of the messages that Sophia just gave about um, an hour ago on her Facebook live. So um, how uh, wonderful. So we have a lot of um, corporate people that are here. Oh, Clark, Clark is with us. You've got to uh, meet Clark next time. you. I think you met him. You did, uh, meet did I meet him at the tennis clinic, possibly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he said, great to see that Dr. Betty and James live. Great to see you too here, Clark. Um, a lot of corporate people are here. So um, you know what I'd like to do, James, is, um, in, in, you know me, I always see an opportunity to collaborate and an opportunity to make an impact. Maybe we just talk about doing a, a group together because mm -hmm. we're doing everything on Zoom anyway, so we could totally yeah. The same thing that we did um, in Los Angeles for entrepreneurs and for the entrepreneur mm. organization and for the VIPs, we could actually kind of package that and do that mm. so that people can actually gain a lot of value. So yeah, um, well, let's talk about that. Yeah, um, I'd be very would interested. Like to come back and maybe talk about your book and. Thank I'd you. love to come back and talk about, talk about my book. Yeah, I need an excuse to come to LA. That's my. Uh, that's, <laughs> I love I it. I love it. Well, was, thank you so yeah. much. Is uh, there, thank you. Um, how do people get a hold of you? Yeah, so uh, LinkedIn is, is, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. So James Kluski. My email is j.kluski, C-L-U-S-K-E-Y, at hccollective.co. So it's not .com, not .co.uk, just .co. Um, you can connect with me on Facebook if you want. LinkedIn is probably the best way. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, and anyone who wants to reach out, please reach out, and I look forward to hearing from you. Absolutely, thank and, you. And just, just, just to finish, just to thank you so much for for having me on, and to thank you for everything you've done for me as well. So I really, I really appreciate it. Absolutely, James. It's it, it's a it's a two way street. It always has been from the very beginning, and um, I really treasure our friendship. I really treasure us being there for one another, and. Uh, it's been a true give and take um, between us from the, just from the very beginning and um, talk about a value centered individual and a great leader and someone who I would trust with my own children. And um, I, I love you dearly. And I'm just so happy that I get to introduce you in this way and you know i'm thinking why did it take covid for me to do this yeah, so, yeah. my tribe and so yeah, so yeah. here we go so we're gonna do this 
again in a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah. We're going to spend a full hour with James. Mm -hmm. Today was just 30 minutes, but I want to spend a full hour with you uh, because there's so many pockets that we mm. want to get into. And I want to really get deeper into your book and, and mm. a lot of the leadership lessons. And maybe, and it could be an anticipation for a round table or something that we end up Yeah. With. Happy, happy to do it. Continue the dialogue, and I'm, I'm excited. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, James. See Thanks you. Take care. Thanks, everyone, everybody. for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye now.